Welcome everyone to our video on finding the empirical formula of a chemical compound. Our learning goals in this video are simple. We are going to first define the empirical formula and show how it differs from the molecular formula. And then we're going to go through an example problem to see the steps on how we determine the empirical formula from the percent composition. Just a note on some prior understanding before we get into this. You should have a firm grasp of mole molar mass conversions, and you should have a firm grasp of calculating the percent composition or percent by mass of a chemical compound. The empirical formula, or EF as we will refer to it, is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a chemical formula. The empirical formula is also referred to as the simplest formula for the reasons stated in this definition. Now, initially you might say, well, aren't all chemical formulas simple whole number ratios? Well, we need to think back to nomenclature here and do some comparison between ionic and covalent compounds. Here we have a series of five different chemicals. The empirical formula is always the simplest whole number ratio. A molecular formula applies to covalently bonded molecules because if you remember from nomenclature, the formula for a covalently bonded molecule needs to state the number of atoms in that molecular unit. So we don't reduce it to the simplest ratio. It tells us the number of atoms, whereas the empirical formula just gives us the ratio. So for ethyne, which is C2H2, it's a molecule which contains two carbons and two hydrogens. We can express that same ratio as this, an empirical formula in which it would just be CH. Benzene is another covalently bonded molecule with a formula of C6H6. A one-to-one -one ratio, so its empirical formula is also CH. So multiple compounds can have the same empirical formula, but they could, then they might have different molecular formula. For ionic compounds though, an ionic compound is always expressed as its empirical formula because it's all, an ionic compound is simply a ratio of ions and we always express that in its simplest whole number ratio. Our next video will look at determining the molecular formula, but we want to first start off with finding the empirical or simplest formula. Let's do this by looking at an example problem. In order to find the empirical formula, the information that we need to find is the percent by mass. And as we've discussed previously, that's something that is quite uh, sometimes uh, quite easy to do uh, through synthesis and decomposition reactions. Um, so the percent by mass can be determined experimentally. And if we know the percent by mass, then we can determine what chemical formula a particular compound is. So let's switch over to the whiteboard and solve this problem. So the reason why I chose this example is because here is a combination of elements which have two possibilities for the compound which could form. As you know, iron is multivalent. So when iron combines with sulfur, we have a possibility of producing FeS, iron 2 sulfide, or we can produce iron 3 sulfide, Fe2S3. Since a formula is a ratio of atoms and not a ratio by mass, the percent composition doesn't immediately tell us what the chemical formula is going to be. Once we have the percent by mass, our first step in solving this problem is going to imagine that we have a 100 gram sample of this compound. So we're going to assume a 100 gram sample. Now, 
In theory, we could use any mass. The reason why I'm using 100 grams is to make a conversion here very simple. If we have a 100 gram sample of the compound and 63.6% .6 of that is iron, now we know the mass of iron quite easily. 63.6% .6 of 100 is 63.6 grams. We also know the mass of sulfur. If we have a 100 gram sample and 36.4% is sulfur, then we have 36.4 grams. So I want to emphasize that the reason why I'm imagining I'm working with a 100 gram sample of this compound is to just to allow for a simple conversion between the percentages and the masses. So now I actually have a mass ratio, 63.6 .6 grams of iron to 36.4 grams of sulfur. But a formula is expressed in a ratio of atoms. And so if we want to convert mass to atoms, we need to use the mole concept. So my second step here is going to be to convert each of these masses into moles using the mass over molar mass formula. So once again, the molar mass that I'll be using will be the molar masses that I'm pulling off from the periodic table. So let's do that now. So now I've converted the masses into moles. Remember, a mole ratio is the same as an atom ratio because the moles just represent a quantity of atoms. In this example here, I can look at these two values and say, well, they're very, very close to each other. And I think when you're looking to two decimal places here, you, it's uh, usually pretty safe to say we are going to be close enough. And we could look at those and say, this looks like a one-to-one -one ratio. That is not always the case that you can uh, say that just by looking at the numbers. Sometimes it's not immediately evident. If you can't look at the mole numbers here and say this is a one-to-one -one ratio, what we can do is convert these into whole numbers. And the first step in doing that is to take the smaller of the two values and divide both of the mole values that you have by that number. So 1.13, slightly smaller than 1.14, so I'm going to divide both of them by that same number. When I divide a ratio by the same number, that keeps the ratio the same. But what that does here is to take the smallest value and turn it into a 1. So a 1.14 to 1.13 ratio is the same as a 1 to 1.02 which is approximately equal to a one-to-one -one ratio. So iron and sulfur in this formula are in a one-to-one -one ratio, which tells me the empirical formula is FES. So let's review these steps again on how we found the empirical formula. Our first step was to find the percent composition, which in a lot of these problems will be given to you. Once we found the percent composition, we assumed that we had 100 grams of the substance. And so we took the percent composition of each element and turned those into masses. We then took the mass of each element and converted it into moles using the mass over molar mass formula. At that point, if we could just see the whole number ratio, then we could just write the empirical formula from there. 
So for example, on that one, 1.13 to 1.14 was pretty much one to one. So that told me our formula was FES, a one to one ratio. If you cannot determine the simplest whole number ratio, we divided all mole quantities by the smallest of the set. And this set the smallest value to one. This will ensure that whatever mole ratio we get will likely be the smallest value. If the other values are not yet whole numbers, then we're going to find the lowest common multiple and convert all of those values into whole numbers. Now we didn't need to do step number six in that example problem. So let's just look at how that works with ratios. Let's just imagine we have found the mole ratio. We've set the smallest value to one and we get something like this, a one to 1.5 to two ratio. So we have three different elements in this compound. What I'm gonna do is just by trial and error or just uh, by inspection, if you can see it, is find a whole number that we can multiply all of these numbers by that will give whole numbers for all of these. Now I look at this and I say, oh, something 0.5. Well, I know if I have something that uh, is ends in 0.5 and I double it or multiply it by two, that will give me a whole number. So I'm going to multiply every quantity in this ratio by two. One times two, two. 1.5 times two, three. Two times two, four. So a one to 1.5 to two ratio is the same as a two to three to four ratio. Now at this point, I stop because now I have the simplest whole number ratio. This step is not required in every example, but is often required when you can't see the whole number ratio just by looking at um, a ratio with decimals.